I am your brother in Christ. Brother, one of the questions we get is, why does such a loving God allow sin? That's an excellent question because we are in the Easter season right now, the time that Jesus died upon the cross for the sins. Why did God allow sin to begin with? To answer this question, we must take it all the way back to Genesis itself. In Genesis 1, 26, then God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let them have domain over the fish of the sea the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and everything that creeps upon the earth. So we see the creation of man in Genesis 1, 26. In Genesis 2, 16 and 17, God sets down the rules. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So this is a part in Genesis where God has created everything. He's created the garden. He set man in the garden. And now he's setting the rules down for Adam in Genesis 2, 16 through 17. Okay, but why did God create the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if he knew that man could possibly sin? And in fact, he knows everything, so he did know that man was going to sin. Isn't this God just setting Adam up to, you know, royally mess up? I mean, God already knew it, so... Why would he do that? Isn't that like a hypocritical thing, definitely, if he loves us? Ah, so you get it. That's at the root of the question. Why would a loving God who loves Adam and Eve set them up to fail? He knew that this was going to happen if he created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So why? And the answer is very simple, actually. Do remember that God created mankind to have that relationship with him, and a part of that relationship is choosing to have it with him. If God never created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve need to have the option of following him or not. And as we know, eventually the serpent tempted Eve, who took the fruit, the fruit to Adam, and then Adam ate, and they both ended up sinning. God came down and said, what did you do? As if he didn't already know, being sarcastic and giving them the opportunity of repenting. Oh, they come out and admit it and immediately start playing the name game. No, they did it, they did it, they did it. It was a snake, it was a snake's fault. Like a bunch of pansies. Already starting the blame game. Started really early on in human history. Even though that they repented and that they were sorry, there was still that division there between them and God that was called sin. And because of that, there still needed to be payment for that sin. And the payment for sin is death. But the Lord has already foreseen this and is already putting in motion his plans for redemption and our salvation. We see that in Genesis 3 verse 14 through 15. So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all of the days of your life. And I shall put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. An interesting note here, as you can see, the last section there is talking about Jesus, where Jesus crushes enemy's power, the enemy does strike him where on his heel, which is one of the places the nails went through. This is the first time we see one of the many specific prophecies that Jesus will fulfill. After this, we see God engineering history and using nations, not only the nation of Israel, but other nations on top of that, in order to craft what he needed for Jesus to come into the world, to die upon the cross, to spread the gospel as quick as possible throughout the nations. But that is a topic for another time. To answer the question, why does such a loving God allow sin? The answer to that is because he wanted us to have free will in order to choose our own path. We can choose to walk with him or we can choose to walk away. At any time, we can change our path. And he gives us the opportunities to repent to him at any time through the blood of Jesus Christ. He has now paid the price for that divide that we see in Genesis. With humanity on one side and God on the other. As always, if you want to join us in our walk and growth with Christ, click the subscribe button, like, comment, join us. If you have any questions, leave it down below. And let's end in prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, holy is your name. Glory be to your name above all things. Thank you for loving us enough to pay the price. The price for our sins, for our mistakes. 
for the wrongs that we have done. Please help us grow closer to you as we grow closer to each other. Open our eyes to the opportunities to serve you in any capacity we can. And let us shine a light for your honor and your glory. And in all things, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.